Williams. Canning from start to finish, and I'm not even ready. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? So I shucked all this corn because this is what I'm canning today. Um, I got a really good deal on it. They were 25 cents a cob, and I shucked them, and I was trying to have it ready before I even come on because I don't really know how many jars this is going to make, so I'm just going to cut this up and fill these jars, and we're going to be canning fresh corn today, so it's, it's already cleaned. I got all the stuff off, and... You know, I've had all day to do this, which I was running around today. I was doing the grocery haul and me and my daughter did that. And I come home and time just got away from me. But here I am and I'm so happy to be doing this. Um, I love canning and I want other people to love canning. And the only way that you're gonna love canning is if you learn how to do it, right? So, that's what we're doing tonight. It's really, and this, I'm saving these, the pigs will eat these. Um, so, that was one, this is two, so one pint is actually, I don't know if you guys can see this, one pint is gonna hold two cobs. Rule of reference here, rule of reference. And that's all I'm gonna put in this. So here's my first jar. Isn't that so pretty? Fresh cut corn off the cob. Um, so just getting started. So all of this, I got it shucked, I got it cleaned, but I haven't got it cut. So it's all right, we're gonna get it done. I'm just gonna cut it and get my jars filled up. Come on, do. Um. Oh, I'm making a mess. I've seen other people do this with bunt cakes. I don't have a bunt cake pan, where they set their cob down in the little opening of the bunt cake, and it holds the cob, and it will um make it easier to cut, and then all the kernels fall in the bunt cake pan thing and then you can just pour it in. I'm just going to do it old fashioned way and cut it off. Because like I said, I got a really good deal on this corn and it is going in my jars. So I'm planning to do two layers today. If I can get two layers, if I can get enough jars to do two layers, that's what we're going to do. And um, once I get these done, I'll show you guys the rest of the process. But this, this is actually the hardest part of the whole thing. Prepping your vegetables or prepping your food is absolutely the hardest part of the whole thing. The rest of it is easy breezy. If you follow the rules, if you're safe, if you're mindful, um, you can absolutely do this. I'm a newbie. Only water bath, pickles, and tomatoes. But this year I was given a pressure canner. What? You are going to have so much fun with your pressure canner. That's what I'm using today. I'm going to pressure can this fresh cut corn. Um, I, shuck, I shucked it just a little bit ago. I cleaned it. And now I'm cutting it off the cob, which um, is a tedious task. But the rewards are great. So I will be pressure canning in my new canner. Um, it does have a gauge on it. Does yours have a gauge? I have one that doesn't have a gauge and I thought about doing an, a separate canning video, another canning video maybe next weekend, um, showing how to use one of the pressure canners that doesn't have the gauge. And what I'm talking about is this, the gauge on top that shows that. Um, the one I'm using today does have one. and. I have a little Presto that I canned in. That was my very, basically my first canner. And I did everything in it and it worked great. It absolutely worked great. Okay, so 
that's not going to hold the two. So a while ago we saw that the other one held two cobs because when you're canning, you want to leave headspace. So I always use the rim as reference. I'm not going to feel anything past that because we are going to put hot water in this once we get our jars full. So this, this jar is ready. I'm going to move on to the next one. And I'm going to pour this in there. This is, this is, um, very messy, very messy. Um, you don't have the gauge. Okay. You can still do it. And if you're interested, um, and everything works out next Friday, um, yeah. if we want to do pressure canning in my Presto that doesn't have the gauge, we can totally do that too. I'm always up for canning something. <laughs> always up for canning something. Why is it telling me to do that? It's telling me to swipe. I'm not going to swipe. I'm not going to swipe my thing. I'm going to leave it alone. So, um, I think learning how to get it up to temperature um, and having the proper weight on your pressure canner is the most important thing. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, my kitchen, my rules, I think, is, is the, was the phrase I heard. And if you're playing by, you know, uh, safe and cautious rules, yeah, you can use that one. Nothing like fresh corn. Y'all, I actually got this at Walmart today. This was, I did the grocery haul, um, but this was separate. I got 20 ears of corn for $5. And I felt like that was good because it was 25 cents a piece. And I got a watermelon for $2. And I was happy. <laughs> like Watermelons were marked down from $7.96 today. Okay, another one. I'm getting carried away here. It's too much. I'm going to pour some out. And again, you're just going to want to fill it about right there. And this is a raw pack or a hot pack. I'm not cooking the corn. I'm just cutting it off the cob and putting it in my jars. And you can do that because it's going to cook in the jars. Um, it builds up pressure in the canner and it reaches high temperatures that's going to kill uh, bacteria. So I think there's a divided community, but we're all the same. We're all on the same team. Um, I have not been finding good corn. Oh, where do you live? I'm in Oklahoma and I was going to buy a bushel today. Um, off of one of the little stands that people set up at, but I just didn't have time. So um, I ran into the store and I happened to see the corn on sale and I snatched it up. <laughs> and I shucked it and it turned out, I mean, I think it's the light is making it look white, but uh, it all looks really good. I'm, I'm pleased with the corn. Um, okay, so let me, as I'm doing this, just kind of talk a little bit about um, what should be pressure canned. Because there's a divided community, I think, where um, everybody, some people say, you know, they water bath can everything, even meat. I'm afraid to do that. Um, I do can meat and soups and everything. But knowing <laughs> and reading about botulism and things like that, I am so afraid not to follow the rules on food safety. And so I don't water bath can meats. Those um, that are low acid foods um, need to be pressure canned. So let's be safe. Let's be safe. And I have never canned. There's another one. Isn't that just beautiful, you guys? It's going to be really beautiful when we put the water in there. Um, 
I've never done butter. I know people do butter. I've never done milk. I'm, I'm too afraid, honestly. So if anybody on here has done it, North Texas. Okay, so you're probably pretty close to us. We are kind of on the line of Arkansas, but Texas isn't that far from us. Actually, just um, about a month ago, we went on a camping trip with a motorcycle ministry group, and we actually drove into Paris, Texas, and visited um, the Veteran Memorial there. So it's really not that far of a drive. We had a good time on that trip. Oh, I'm making a mess. It's all right. I used to go to Bigsby to call, but no time this year. No time. Yeah, I'm feeling that too. It's like the days are getting shorter and there's really not time to do anything and the summer is flying by. I, I told my daughter, I said, do you realize in a month we're gonna, you, you're gonna have to be back in school? Like you have about maybe a little over a month and school is going to start back up. That is just crazy to me. And I look back and I'm like, what have I done all summer? <laughs> I got nothing done. And we had such a fiasco. You guys, our weather here in Oklahoma was horrendous. And we had bought a greenhouse this year. And um, I posted some clips. I think I posted clips on here. If not, it's on, it's on our YouTube thing. The greenhouse got blew away like three times. I had to restart seeds three times. The ones I've got restarted now are doing wonderful. So I'm going to have a really late garden. But in the meantime, I'm just going to buy my stuff that I need to can. I'm just going to buy it from farmers. I'm going to buy it from the store if it's on sale. If it's in season and on sale, I'm going to get it while it's cheap. Um, I'm not going to be real picky because we don't know how much more the prices are going to increase. And so, um, I'm just thinking like, uh, I'm going to get it now. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five. I got five so far and my canner, if I double stack will fit 12. So... I live in a small town. I live in Oklahoma. Hey! Hey, there's another Oki in here. Awesome. I live in a small town with the best people I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. Small town living um, has, definitely has its perks, right? I can't get this corn cob off. We live in a super small town. Um, I, we live way out, we live in the woods. And I like it that way. I like it. If I didn't have, honestly, I mean, I am an introvert. I enjoy this life. And if I didn't have to go out in the public, if I could just stay home the rest of my days, and I would, but we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. There is still life to be lived. Um, anyway. So let's see how much is this gonna hold. I am making a mess. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yay. Okay, here's another one. So that makes six. And I started with 20 ears of corn and I was hoping that that would be enough to, to do a double stack today. And if when I drive by that little stand in my town um, and they're, selling, they're still selling the bushels of corn, I'm gonna grab one. And I'm going to spend an afternoon cleaning it and canning it. Um, I'm in my second year canning. Oh, you do get obsessed, don't you? It's like, what can I can next? <laughs> what can I can next? So I was thinking of recipes, canning recipes um, for different soups and different stews. Because that is literally, that could literally be your fast food in the winter. So we got snowed in last year. And those times are perfect to bake bread, to make, you know, pies or whatever, cookies. 
um, pop open a jar of stew that you canned and heat it up and just sip your coffee and enjoy life, right? <laughs> so when I'm canning, I think about those times. I think about being um, in the winter and what would I like to eat and what would warm my soul. So putting in the work now to um, reap it later. But you know what? I'll can all year long. Oh, I will, I'll can all year long. If um, I do make it some chili in the fall, and we I make a lot, and if I'm intentional, I will make a huge, a big batch, and then I'll can it, and then we'll have it. However, <laughs> that first year, well, that first year, um, I don't even know how to say this. I don't want to say the word on there. The pandemic year, everything was super hard to get a hold of. Um, but now I went and got some new um, lids for this today. And some, my husband brought home a bunch of canning jars. Someone left at our church dumpster, just left them there. And he grabbed them for me because nobody else wanted them. And I was like, I'll take them. That's like a hot commodity around here. I'll take those. So I washed them up, got me some lids for them. We're good to go. Um, it can be expensive. For those of you that can, it can be expensive. Um, there's nothing better. I've got to can some chili. I've never made homemade chili. Oh, girl. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Now I wanna do it. Me and my husband would, would live by a campfire if we could, and we used to do a lot of like camping and hiking and things like that. Um, but time doesn't permit us to do that anymore, actually. Actually, we're on our 10 year. This is our 10, we had our 10 year anniversary um, last week. And so he's on vacation or he's gonna be off work for the fourth. And we're actually going to go to the mountains and we're going to do some camping. <laughs> there is a place. When I turned 40, um, the thing I wanted to do the most, and we did it, was to go on a mountain. And it's in Arkansas. And I camped there. And I like to do um, camp in my vehicle, like in the back of it. And I sat, I got to sit on the edge of a cliff looking out like into God's creation and it was just like vast and big and beautiful and intimidating um and that's the place that we're going to go back we've been there like you know we've been there since then but that was the only thing that I wanted to do on my big 40 um was to go and sit on that hill and drink my coffee that morning and it was worth it. It was so worth it. All right, we're getting there, y'all. We're getting to the good parts. I'm about to. I got four jars. Okay. So that one's a little full, so I'm just going to pour a little bit out. I don't want to overfill these. I don't want to risk the um, risk the risk them not sealing by overfilling them. Oh, we might not have enough corn, so that's what's left. And that's okay. We can still double stack. It'll be okay. My little Presto isn't a double stack, but the one I'm using today, the induction one that I've talked about so much on my, is this a channel or a page? I don't know. Um, that's one one we're using today because it's my new one and I love it. I got to break it in. It doesn't have any... Let's say scars on it yet from being overused. It's still new. And also, I was going to seal our, one of our propane tanks up and break out the turkey fryer and um, do some canning outside. I have this dream, and I haven't got to fulfill it yet. And it is to harvest from my big bountiful garden that I don't have yet and like do um, 
fire roasted tomatoes and canned like canned diced tomatoes, fire roasted diced tomatoes and take everything from the garden to our little fire pit and just can away. Like that's a dream that I haven't got to live out yet. Seems like um, either I'm not working hard enough for the dream or we just got setbacks. But I don't know. It's the small things in life that make me happy. And I feel like you guys would agree. Um, I live, I now live in Utah in a small town in the mountains. It's amazing. <gasps> I bet. I had a hand-me-down pressure canner and got a new one this year. Hey, um, I had a lady from church let me borrow one of hers. And for a while I used it and it was like the one that I bought didn't have the gauge on it. And then she let me use this hers and it had a gauge on it and I used it for a season. <laughs> And I recently gave it back to her. Uh, I had ordered my me a new one, and then I gave that one back to her because um, it, it doubles back. So there ain't nothing wrong with hand-me-downs, especially if it gets you started, right, before you invest to even know if you like it, which um, w once you start, <laughs> there ain't no stopping. It's so beautiful. Oh, it is so beautiful. Okay. We might get away with one more jar. Um, because I've got three corns left. Three ears of corn. So we'll see. I may just save one of the corn, one of the ears of corn, and I may boil it, and that may be my dinner, so I may just do that. I bought all these groceries today and I didn't think about what I was going to eat or nothing. I was just worried about getting stuff for this. Um, my daughter left for her dad's today and then my son is at work. So I'm home alone. My husband's at work. So I'm here by myself for just a little while because he will be off work pretty soon. All right, I love it. Okay, we're about to get to the good stuff, y'all. This hard, tedious prep is almost done. I've been watching on Paramount on my phone. We don't have satellite, but I downloaded Paramount on my phone and I've been watching 1883. I don't know if anybody's watched that, but anyway, um, I'm kind of addicted. It started off kind of slow. I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. But I was thinking about how hard it would have been in those days. And would I have survived? I don't know. I don't know if I could have survived. Okay. This is the last one. I'm going to wash my hands and then we're going to get started. So, all right, I need to wipe all this corn off and then I'm going to adjust you guys so that you can see my stuff. 1883, yes, you check it out. It's, it's from 1883 and it's um, got some good actors in it. You've seen a few episodes. What did you think about it? I'm dreaming that too. It's going to happen. I hope it happens for both of us. I hope it happens for both of us. Okay. Let me show you my stove so you guys can see the, what it looks like over there before we, let me clean up all my corn mess. I hear the kitty. You guys are probably gonna hear the kitty. It's a rescue kitty that my husband brought home. And it's living its best life. All right. Okay, here's. Can y'all see that? I don't want to take you off the stand. I don't want you. I don't want that to be loud. Let me just take you. I'm gonna take you, and I'm gonna flip you. Okay. Uh oh. How do I flip? Can I flip on here? I don't know if I can. Okay. So, there's my water. Oops, I'm hitting buttons. And then 
Can y'all see? Okay, my pot has seen better days, but that's got my water in it that we're going to pour in the jars. And then here's my jars that uh, are my lids. So they're ready. They're, everything's hot. Everything is ready. So let me put you back. Um, please don't fall. Please don't fall. I hit something on the phone. Why am I doing this? Okay. It was slow. Like you said, waiting on the next season. Yeah, it was, it was pretty slow. Um, have y'all read this one after the series? No, 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 I have not. So I'm probably gonna, I usually, this is my little secret indulgence. 10 o'clock is rolled around. My son gets home from work. Um, I go in my room with my phone <laughs> and I lay in bed and I watch it. Now, another one that I watched, I don't know if I should recommend it on here. And I don't even know why I got into it because I usually don't watch movies like or shows like this. Um, but was Why Women Kill. And I seen a TikTok thing of all places. Of course, TikTok influenced me. And I started watching it on Paramount. The first season was like pretty good. The second season was weird and I don't know. If they come out with the third, I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. Anyway, let's get back to canning. What do I need? I need I'm gonna get my tea kettle. I really need a new one because it has seen better days. So you're gonna want your hot water. And you're gonna want your um, lids that have been sterilizing or in the hot water. You're gonna wanna get everything set up. And I'm gonna move y'all over here. I'm gonna kinda just do this, okay? I hope y'all can see. And I hope my phone don't fall. Lord Jesus, hold my phone still. That makes me nervous. That really makes me nervous. I'm gonna lower y'all. Okay, if that cat don't hit the phone, everything's gonna be fine. Or if it doesn't hit my tripod, everything will be fine. Okay. Oh, I need to put a splash of this vinegar in my canner and that is optional, but um, it said <laughs> that it makes your jars come out cleaner. So I'm not able to see my screen at the moment. But here is my pickling salt. I keep it in this canning jar and I keep this little scooper. It is a fourth of a teaspoon and that is what I keep. And then I have my little doodad that um, I'm going to use to get my rings out. And then I have my other little doodad and I'll show, I'll show you guys. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to put my salt in. And then I'm gonna pour my hot water just right over the corn. I'm gonna clean that off a little bit. Ooh, I think I overfilled by doing that. I think I did. See, if I was making a video, I would've edited that out. <laughs> because, let, let me just show you. That is too full, because we're gonna want it about right there where the rim is, and so I'm gonna pour just a little bit out. I got a little carried away. And so there's our first jar. And I'm gonna set it right there, I'm gonna do the rest, and then we'll put the lids on. And then we'll put the canner, we'll put them in the canner. And we'll let it come up to temperature. Okay. And it's the same process. This is the hardest part. And then once you get it in the canner, um, you're practically done. All you gotta do is watch your canner. I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Y'all are making me nervous by watching me. <laughs> and then I'll try to read some comments if there's any comments. Or if you guys have any input, any tips. Any questions? 
See, this is what I wasn't doing that I should have been doing. Kind of releasing some of the air in there. I turn my air off and it's getting hot in here because it gets really loud. It's so hot. I think my favorite part of this is watching the water fill up in the jar and go over the actual food. <laughs> like That's my favorite part. I love watching it, the way it looks. I could have put some more corn in that one, but we're not going to do it. Sometimes I wonder, who was the first person that discovered you could do this? <laughs> How did they know to do this? It's those pioneers, you know, that paved the way for us. And now this is like, it once was a way of life. And now it's just more like a hobby but it feels like it's becoming a way of life again. Okay, one more. I had enough of everything. Now we're going to clean off our jars. You can use a paper towel. That's what I'm going to do. Or you could use a clean rag if you don't use paper towels. Some people don't, don't use those. And you're just going to take your white vinegar. And you're going to clean off your rims. Or your, yeah, your rims. You're going to make sure that you get like any of the corn, any of the water anything off of those so that your lids will seal. Just clean them off really good and these are super hot. Now do hot water because you're not going to want to put a cold jar inside of a hot canner. That bad things could happen. So we don't do that. Or I don't do that. Now with your little toolie thing here, if you don't have one, just whatever you can. Um, and I want to say my, my, my lids are new. These are new, but my rings are used. They've been used a hundred times. So they are going to have some black stuff on them. They are perfectly fine. It's just cause I've reused them over and over. And so here you're going to stick it on and you're just going to want to do finger tight. You're not going to want to crank it on because you're going to want the air to be able to push up and out and then when it seals it, everything will be good right so just finger tight that's all it takes <laughs> it's so hot that's why i was thinking about doing it outside with a um turkey cooker out there with my camp set my camp thing that's right because that ring looks weird another thing is is if they don't seal like after you can them and you get them out and you might have one occasionally that doesn't seal you can recan them so if you have some, another batch going in or something else going in um and you want to uh, recan that one jar, you can totally do that or just re just or use it, you know, like eat it. That's what I did with the carrots that didn't seal. I had a jar that didn't seal. And I actually just 
cooked them with some potatoes and green beans seasoning and oh they were so good I was actually craving the carrots Oh, it's so hot. Now, I'm going to try to position y'all over here at the canner because now we're going to put these in. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to raise you up. Please. How was it? How was it? Uh, I'm going to try to read comments, you guys. Um... Patrick Atkinson is my husband, y'all. <laughs> oh, okay. It's on Kindle. It's about an EMP hitting the U.S. Oh, I kind of like that stuff. I get so distracted in lives. <laughs> yeah. Do you blanch the corn first? I did not. I did not blanch the corn. I just shucked it. Um cleaned it off like in water I, well when I shucked it I had a pot of water sitting next to me um, and I let it soak and then I took it to the sink and I washed it off and I let it sit in this strainer and cleaned it off cut the ends off and I didn't blanch it but you can you can and I didn't because it will cook in the jars gonna cook in the jars is that salt you're adding yes I'm using a pickling salt I keep it in this um, it's optional you don't have to but everything I can I usually add it's a fourth of a teaspoon that I have of salt uh, I think we realize that we have more control of cost and ingredients when we can our own you're absolutely right so when I saw the corn being so cheap I was like I can't pass up that deal <laughs> and especially right now like with the farmers markets and um, little individuals that you know sell their produce this is a great time like for those of us that are slow in the gardening um, or maybe not have a garden or have a way to garden you can still can your own food this is the, a great season to do that um, yes canned carrots I'm gonna do some more carrots. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of things. Okay, I'm gonna move you guys over to my canner. I think I'm probably gonna have to turn that light on over there because it's getting pretty dark over here. So, I don't know how close I can get you. I don't know how to flip you around. Oh, right there. Okay, I'm gonna flip. Does that say flip? Does that say flip? I'm gonna press a button. That doesn't say flip. I know people do it. Why can't I do it? I was gonna try to flip you guys so you could see closer. Um, I like, I really wanted to show you inside my camera. I am going to post this on the YouTube channel. The link is in the bio. Here I'm shamelessly plugging my YouTube. But that's because if anybody wants to go back and watch, if they have to get off or they're just curious, you know, like anything, that's why I'm going to post it over there. And for the people that watch me on YouTube. Did I flip y'all? No. Okay, but you can see, right? So I'm actually going to turn my heat up. It's on a two right now. I'm going to turn it up to maybe a six because we're going to want to bring this up now. And I put a dash of vinegar in there. You don't have to, but they say that it helps keep your jars pretty clean when you pull them out. So I'm going to grab a jar and we'll sit it down in there. There's our first jar. There is our next jar. I should have cleaned my stove. But I use it. We all use it. It's hard to... I'm stepping on corn. You're going to hear me. My shoes are sticking to the... Because I, I got all that corn over here. I got to clean it up. Okay. 
there's the first layer. Okay, so I'm gonna go get my little thing that sits on here and I'm gonna put the other four jars right here. I forgot to grab it. So with your canner, you might not have gotten one of these. If you have a big one, if this is a 23 quart, if you can purchase these separate. You can purchase them on Amazon. I'm actually just gonna do this because I'm not having to stick my hand down in there. Okay, just like that, you guys. Woohoo! And I hear it. I can hear the water. Now, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to lock this in place. I'm going to get it fit on there. Just right. Lock it in place, and now we're going to wait. And when it starts coming up out of here, and this top is up, that's when we're going to know that it is time to put our weight on and that and then when the pressure builds up we will we'll begin the process so let's see if i missed any questions or comments while we wait for that and maybe i should do a little cleanup while we while we wait it's getting dark in here i'm going to go turn this other light on Probably doesn't even help. Does it help? A little bit. Um. Oh, babe, I'm talk, Patrick. Um. I got this corn on the cob that I didn't put in a. How much corn do you need? Is it for our camp trip? How much water is in the canner? Okay, great question. I should have showed you guys. Um, so about three inches is the rule. Um, some have commented on previous my some of my previous videos that that's about three quarts. So once you break your canner in um, and you you know measure it out the first few times. Pretty soon you're gonna get a ring around it and you're just gonna know about how much to put in. But rule of thumb is about three inches. And if you feel like you need to raise your jars up, I couldn't in this one because I double canned. Um, if you have some old lids like, let me see. Like this one's pretty old and rusty. See inside there? Um, you can set them on the bottom and then put your plate on it, your that little silver plate thing, if you wanted to raise your cans up off the bottom of it. It doesn't matter, but um, about three inches. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, and this vinegar's getting it off. And after I take my lids off, I usually throw them in soapy water, rinse them off. You know, I don't usually... Um, Okay, love you, babe. See you when you get off. Maybe. Are you working late? Just text me. Don't say it on here. <laughs> um, when you're done canning and after you've let in your jars cool, um, this is also debatable, but I always take these off and then I have a bungee cord that I put them on and I hang them in my pantry. Um, it's been said, I, I can't vouch for it, but it's been said that if you leave your rings on and your jar unseals, your ring is holding that lid down and it will potentially reseal and air has gotten in. Now, that's on what I've read on canning forums over the years. Some debate it, some say that they've never had a problem. So that would be something that you would need to investigate for yourself. <laughs> so I just take them off. It's up to you. And I'm able to save money by not having to buy a whole bunch of rings just to store my jars. 
I can reuse these over and over and over, whereas the lids you're going to want to keep buying. Um, and I actually have reused. It's not recommended. What is that saying I said in the beginning? People say, my kitchen, my rules. I hate that, but I'm going to use that because if I've canned something like this corn and I've used brand new lids and I open a can and it's not bent, it's not disturbed, none of like it's still intact, it looks good, none of the sides are bent, I will reuse it one more time. But I'm very careful because I, I pay attention if if I'm going to reuse lids, um, I do a whole batch with reused lids so that I can pay attention to them when they cool and check to see if they've really sealed. Um, and if I use new lids, I use new lids in the whole batch, like as I do batches. That's just what I do, just so that I know, <laughs> just so that I know. Um, another thing you could do is if, if you did reuse a lid, maybe put... Um, a little mark on there like a little star that way you know hey I've already used this before it's time to get rid of it and buy new lids or if you don't want to don't do it <laughs> I don't know um okay so the corn since I've, I've double stacked it if it was just one layer I would run it for about 75 minutes okay because it was raw packed it's not cooked um so I would, I would process it longer, but since I added two layers, I'm actually going to process for 90 minutes because there's more in there um, just to be safe. And it will cook um, when it's done, all said and done, your corn is going to be ready to eat out of the jar, which means you can pop that baby open and eat that corn anytime. And... It's just so convenient, and but even though it's canned, I still, when I use it, you know, I still, like, I still cook it. <laughs> I still cook it, even though it's cooked. I have got a mess everywhere. You are welcome. I'm so glad you guys are on here. I'm so glad that you guys were so interested in um, the canning process. So after it comes up to temperature, after we get the weight on, um, I'm going to close the live stream down until, because it's going to be 90 minutes. And then in 90 minutes, um, I'll come back on and I'll show you like it coming out of the canner. Like taking the, you know, everything, taking the weight off taking it out of the thing and all the stuff. So, um, I could probably, um, set up another live stream event for anybody that wanted to come on and watch the removal of the corn out of the canner. That's the best part. That's the best part. Oh my goodness. So those of you that know what this feeling is like when you pull your food out of the canner and it's all bubbly and it's like, it's got its own life going happening and inside the jar and everything's moving and bubbling. It is just, it's amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, no problem. And I'm going to plug myself in again. If um, there's something that you want to go back and watch, I'm going to clip these together and I'll post them on the YouTube channel so that you can go back and say, hey, um, I didn't get to catch the end of that. So, you know, a lot of people are, are getting it, are really getting into it. And I think it's because of the days we're living in. And I think it's because of um, the food shortages and all of the bad food, you know. And as I was making my grocery list today, or when I put my grocery order in, um, I really want to get away from having to buy the store meat and chickens and things like that. But I realize there are people that can't do that. There are people that don't have enough property or land to raise a cow or raise pigs um, or chickens. So my grocery hauls, yeah, it's going to be f processed foods. But that series um, is going to be tailored to people that are 
just needing budget-friendly dinner ideas. And so for the first one, I did, I'm not going to use anything off my pantry. I'm, I bought all food from the store. Um, uh, and then I may do later, I may do, let's just eat from the pantry for two weeks and see. But then I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, okay, it is starting to bubble. We are going to go over to the canner. Slowly. Times are really hard for a lot of people right now, and we are feeling it too. Um, I have a small sewing business, and that's what I do, and then I take care of the home. Um, if you've seen some of my videos, I was doing DoorDash, but I, I, I've done it since, like I've done it, I've done it this week, I may go do it tomorrow, and it's just extra cash, um, but gas is so high, so we're waiting here. Gas is so high that I realize um, not everybody can afford, you know, even the gas. Um, that's me. I'm in an apartment. Yes, and so my my oldest kids. I have four grandkids, and um, my oldest son and his wife live in an apartment. And I think about them a lot because that's the like that's all they can do right now they um uh there's nowhere for them to go they're safe like that's their safety you know what i'm saying like trying to find a place to rent you know and coming up with the money for um the first month's rent and your deposit then getting your utilities on and that stuff really adds up and where they live in their apartment, it's affordable. It's affordable for them. And I, I think about them and their situation, and they can't um, grow their own food. They can't have animals. And I realize that um, there are more people out there right now that's just surviving. You know, you're just surviving. And so I decided, you know what? Um, let's do this. Let's, let's do some budget friendly dinner like from the store getting what we can get and let's do this but you can still can food but probably your hindrance would be where would i store my food like where would i put my stuff unless you just dedicated a, a section you know of, of a wall or a, a section of your cabinet space just for your stored items um i lived in an apartment for a while me me and patrick before we got married me and my kids and um we didn't have a lot of room it's getting there y'all so I don't think you can see, but there's steam actually coming out of this and it's starting to bubble up and it's, I can hear it bubbling inside of there. So now that this steam is coming out, I'm going to go ahead and put my weight on and this is a 10 pound weight. And now we are going to let this build up to where it says 10. And then when it says 10, I'm going to say, okay, in 90 minutes, my corn is going to be done. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys, I hope, oh, okay, so something just happened. You can't see it because I can't. This thing right here popped up. Okay, so we're rocking and rolling. There's my gauge. I'm waiting for it to go up to the 10. When it goes up to the 10, I am going to turn my heat down um, because you do not want it to build up too much pressure. Right? So I got my weight on there. We got the jiggle going on and it is um, up to 10. I turn my stove down to two. Actually, it's on simmer. It's actually lower than two. And now we wait for the 90 minutes. Okay. I'm back on but I don't know if it what it called it because it didn't let me put a name on there um I've got ring light eyes too so um this is 
what do I call this? Like part two, because we went through the whole canning process about two hours ago. And it is now time to let the canner settle down. And we're gonna pull all of this wonderful corn out and I want you guys to see it. So this, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. We have to wait just a little bit longer and then we'll be able to pull it out. Um, and I can show you what it's gonna look like. So um, in the previous live, <laughs> I had went by the store and I happened to pick up um, 20 ears of corn in, for 25 cents a piece, which costed me, when I rung it all up at, at Walmart today, it was five bucks, okay? And I got 10 pint jars of corn out of it. So after I ended the previous live, I was like, man, what a deal. Like, I didn't even mention that in the live before. But um, if you're able, if you're able to get these deals, if you don't have a pressure canner and you can't can it, but you can um, freeze it, I mean, really, you guys, that would be an amazing way to put some food away, right? Um Especially with it being 25 cents. And then I also found a watermelon for two bucks. Walmart had them marked down from $7.98 to two bucks. And I don't know if it's because it's the holiday, like 4th of July is coming. And then I also noticed gas was 430 in Arkansas, which I live in Oklahoma, but I drove up to Arkansas because that's where I like to do my shopping. And here it was like 460 something. And today in Siloam Ar Springs, Arkansas, it was $4.30. And I was like, wow, that's cheap. <laughs> How sad is it? How sad is it that we think $4.30 a gallon is cheap? Really? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> anyway, I know there are other people that have it like, it's like over $5 a gallon. And I don't envy y'all at all. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's just the way things are. And I'm trying to be optimistic. And I'm trying to think positive. Like, it's going to get better. But I feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better. So anyway, we are waiting for our pressure canner to settle down. It is still, you know, doing its thing. Um, when this gauge goes down and it's cooled down a bit, I'll be able to take this top off and I won't blow anything up. Actually, the, the worst thing that has happened, I've never had a canner explode. I've never had a canner do anything like that. However, I wasn't paying attention one time and I let it get so, like, so hot that it actually blew my weight off. And that's a, you know, pretty hefty weight. It totally blew the weight off. Steam was going everywhere um, because I forgot to turn my heat down. So that's the worst that I've ever experienced. Um, another thing is being so very careful. When you take your lid off, I have gotten a steam burn and that is horrible. Um, because it's just like that top layer of your skin is just burnt, it's sensitive, it um, blisters because you open it and the steam comes out and then it scalds your skin. So there's that. But that could happen with any type of cooking, of course. Um, sit home and boycott gas prices. <laughs> We've, we, um, my husband's been riding his motorcycle a lot to save gas. Um, he froze one night coming home because he was like, it is so cold. Um, and then my other son, my middle son, he recently had wrecked his vehicle. And so him and I are sharing my vehicle. And on days I don't have to go nowhere, I don't go nowhere. And if I have stuff that needs to be shipped to the post office, I send it with one of them just to save gas. Um, can you throw my laundry in washer? Okay. I forgot to turn that off. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm going to turn off. Do not disturb. Um, okay. 
<laughs> there's that. <laughs> I guess I gotta be doing some laundry when I get off this live. <laughs> okay, we are down to five. We need to get it down to zero and we will open this canner. Um, wow, it has been quite the day. Um, anyway, I'm going to compile all of this into one video and I will post it on YouTube. I keep saying that, but, um, I enjoy it and I want, I want people to know that they can absolutely do this. What does that say? Scroll what? I'm not doing it. I ain't touching my screen. Weird things happen when I touch the screen. Okay. It's, it's getting there. It's getting there, you guys. It's getting there. Um, I have two layers of corn. So I have six on the bottom. And then I was only able to do four on the top. And I should have calculated all of it so that I know how much it's actually going to cost me a pint. But what I do know, what I, what I do know is corn and other vegetables are now about 78 cents. Um, in my area per like little 12 ounce can, right? Yep. 14 ounce can. So about 78 cents. Um, my pint jars hold more than that. So you're getting a really good deal. You're getting a really good deal. And if you decide to grab up the corn right now while it's, I feel like it's everywhere. People are selling it by the bushels. Um, if you can't can it, freeze it. Like, shuck it, clean it, blanch it. If you want it on the cob, freeze it on the cob. If you want to cut it off into kernels. what I, If you do that, what I would suggest would be to, um, this might take a little bit, but to keep it kind of where it doesn't clump together if you're going to freeze it. Lay it on a cookie sheet um, and put it in the freezer if you have a deep freezer, if you just have a regular freezer. Let it get firm, like let it get to a frozen state, and then put it in your bags or whatever you're going to do. That way, it's not all stuck together. Because if you put it in all together wet and then you freeze it, all the water and everything is going to make it stick. So if you freeze it, take a little bit of extra time. Lay it on a cookie sheet, freeze it, and then it'll just pour right into your bags. Um, use freezer Ziploc bags so it reduces some of the freezer burn. If you have a food saver of some kind, that would be the best way um, to store it. If you're not able to, oops, pressure can. Okay, but that's what we're doing today. We're waiting for the pressure canner to settle down a little bit so that we can um, open her up. Check out the corn. This is my favorite part. I love pulling it out of the canner and I really wanted you guys to see it live because it's like there's life inside these jars. It's just all bubbly and I'm expecting the corn to be just bubbling and floating. It almost reminds me of lava lamp style stuff because it's just moving around and the, the water is boiling. It's so hot. Um, and it's just like the process just makes me so excited. I love it. Um, so, yeah, we're waiting. And it's now below five. So we are getting there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get that, get that off my screen. So, um, what I'm going to say is, while we're waiting, um, I did my grocery haul today. And I bought enough food for, let's say, two weeks, which me and Patrick will be camping for the 4th. We're going to hit the mountains. We're not going to, you know, do any fireworks or anything. Um, but, so after we get back, then I'll start the actual grocery haul series where every day I'm going to cook, cook dinner and I'm going to show you guys what I cook. I'm going to post the recipe. I started a new blog. If... If you watch my video and you're like, I want that recipe, then just go to that blog. It'll be there. You can snatch it up, put it with your recipes. Um, and this can be a way that 
we're still able to eat good, but on a budget, right? Because food is getting so high. I think the roll of hamburger meat, I really need to go back and look at my thing. I think it was $30 for the roll of hamburger meat that I bought today. Um, I think the chicken, the 10 pounds of chicken, I think was also $30. And that was the most, like, the, the biggest expense was just buying the meat to go with our dinners for the next two weeks. And I was like, what? what? I remember buying these rolls for like 20 bucks and now they're 30. Um, if, if I go to one of the local grocery stores in my town, they're like 40 and $50 for the, for the rolls of hamburger. So I traveled out of town today to pick those up and I ordered online and did the Walmart pickup and it saved me money because if I was to just roll into Walmart with my shopping cart on my grocery list, you better believe I'm going to come out with more than what's on my grocery list. And you better believe I'm going to spend $100 more that I don't have on stuff that I don't need. And this cat, this cat is about to jump up here. It's going to get in trouble. You better stay down. It has learned. It has learned that it can, yeah. <laughs> That's my daughter's cat. Um, so what are we at now? Okay, we're almost there. It's getting there. It's almost time. I'm so excited. I probably should have started a little bit later, but um, I was excited to show you guys. And it's getting a little late here. I am central time, so it's actually 940 where I'm at. Um, Sam's has 10 pound rolls for 35 or so. So it's about the same price. Yeah, I'm like, what is happening in America? And then I watched a really disturbing TikTok just this week. Almost made me not wanna buy the roll, but my family likes meat with their dinner. They like, they like it. And it was hamburger meat and they were cooking it and they're like, and this stuff was coming out of it and they're like, what's wrong with my meat? So it was in a skillet, they were frying it up, and it was bubbling and foaming and like just made me leery. <laughs> like, what is happening? Which which we know. In reality, we know, right? We know what they do, but we still buy it. Because um, I realized, I said earlier in the other live, that some people can't have their own animals. Some people don't know how to, like... I want to process chickens, but I literally don't know how. I have watched tons of videos, but I have never put my hands on a chicken and plucked feathers. And I told Patrick, I said, if we're going to do this, I need to practice. <laughs> I would need to practice because I don't know how. He's the hunter and the gatherer and he's the butcher. And when we process pigs or anything else, oh, I heard something. I heard something happening. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know how to do anything. So when we are going to, I think we're going to butcher the pigs after Sunday. I think when we come back on our trip, I think we're going to butcher the pigs because, uh, you know, it's like, okay, so how long are we going to continue to feed them, right? Because it costs money to feed them. And it's meat that we need to get put up. We need to make our sausage and put our stuff up, right? So anyway. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know how to do anything except this. This is this is my part in the deal. <laughs> the, the home part. Um, okay, so the top, it's not quite ready. Not quite ready. Yeah. So anyway, um, I when I do my grocery stuff for the next two weeks, it's going to be with the stuff that I bought. And I'm going to be honest, if I have to go back to the store and buy something additional for that meal, I will absolutely tell you. But my goal is to post every day the dinner that I'm preparing and what I'm using and how much it cost. Um, I gave an overall total. It was $165 for just dinners for the next two weeks. Um, so I think that's pretty good. 
Now, if I was to include um, breakfast and snacks and lunch because school's out, it would be way more than that. But I didn't. I just did the dinners because a lot of people, that's all they, you know, they come home from work and they cook dinner. And a lot of times they're not home to eat breakfast and lunch. And so I'm focusing on the dinners. Um, that's, that's what I'm doing. Let's check this out. It's getting there. It's almost to zero. Still got a lot of pressure in there. It's still, it's still dangerous. She's still dangerous, y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's what we're doing. And I keep thinking my son's going to walk in anytime. And he is anti-social media. He's 19 years old. Anti-social media. No Facebook. No, He doesn't want to be on our YouTube. He definitely doesn't want to be on TikTok. And he knows people we know watch. And so I can't even get away with sneak posting something. Because he's going to find out. I keep thinking, oh no, he's going to walk through the door any minute. He's going to ruin my whole live stream by saying something stupid yeah what am i canning so i'm about to take corn out of this canner earlier i came on and we did the whole process and i had went to sam's not sam's i went to walmart earlier today to grab a, a birthday gift and i walked through the produce and they had a whole bin of corn for 25 cents an ear so i bought 20 of them and when i rung it up it come to five dollars on my receipt five dollars and i got 10 pints out of the 20 ears of corn that i bought and i feel like that is such a steal so we did a whole live canning earlier and i have two layers of corn that is about to come out of the canner it's gonna be beautiful <laughs> it's gonna be so beautiful so i feel like i really saved um and i, I kind of want to go back and get some more like as long as they have it, like go back and get more, but just little bits at a time so I don't look totally weird. Does that make sense? I was actually going to buy a bushel um, from a local vendor that sits on the side of the road with their produce. And I just didn't have time to stop today. And um, when I saw that, I was like, I'm just going to get this. So I don't want to be the crazy lady that goes in and buys a whole shopping cart full of corn. <laughs> so... If I buy it little bits at a time, does that still make me crazy? I don't know. Or smart, because I'm saving money. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My kids won't go with me. Of course, we did the Walmart pickup today, and so my daughter did go with me. And I said, see, isn't this so much better? Because we don't have to walk through the big shopping cart, you know? Because um, my husband gets paid every two weeks. And so, according to your pay schedule, your family's pay schedule, your family's budget would depend on if you were to buy in bulk. Um, what I have found for us is if I buy little bits at a time where I plan dinner, you know, like just a couple days at a time, I spend way more than we should. Also, um, trying to cut down fast food. Um, making more homemade food which is beneficial in health but also um when you have a family of four it, it saves money right if it's just you and you know you work and you get off work and you don't feel like going home you know yours may look different um but for us right now there's four of us fixing to be three i got a son that's got a job and he's which he's working now, but he's going to get a different job. And he's going to be moving out of town for a while. And I'm just at that stage of my life where I'm moving into, I got grandkids. My kids are growing up. My whole life is changing. Um, it's weird. It's absolutely weird. But I got my hobbies, you know, things that I love to do. Um, got my little business. And I mean, life's pretty good. You know, every season of life is different and every season of life teaches us something new. Um, so glean from it. Whatever season of life you're in, glean from those lessons that you're learning. I can't dwell on the past and I wish I would have done things different when my kids were little. 
um, looking back now, but I can't dwell on that. It'll eat me alive. Um, anyway. But now they're growing up and they're leaving and it's all weird. But still, she's still... I'm going to slowly release this. Well, if you do this, be so careful, okay? Because I'm, I'm rushing it. If I was doing this without y'all, <laughs> I would actually wait until it was totally settled. But I feel like we don't have the time on here because we're doing it live. So I'm going to remove it very slowly. And it's so super hot. Don't dare use your bare fingertips. Right now you won't look crazy. They'll think you're having a big party of the four. That is very true. So I better do it while I can. Then prices may be going up. Is that burning? It smells like it's burning. I guess we're getting ready to find out. I hope I didn't get it too hot. What's my favorite thing to can? Oh my gosh. Hmm. For the beauty of it. Um, okay. My absolute favorite. Absolute. I've got two. Can I say two of my absolute favorites? So when we smoke a chicken, or I smoke a bunch of chicken, or when my, my husband does his pulled pork. So he'll smoke some pulled pork. Oh, it went down. Yay. Or, um, those are my favorite two because when you smoke your chicken and then you debone it, right? And you can it after it's canned and you, you know, weeks, months have gone by and you open it, it still has that flavor. And so does the pork. So when we smoke the pork butts, I shred them all, I can them, and we have pulled pork year round. Um, those are my absolute favorites for the flavor, for the beauty is all vegetables just plain vegetables because they, they look so vibrant in the jars. That's my favorite. Those are some of my favorites. So, um, okay. Now I feel like I'm smelling something burning. I hope I didn't bust it. I hope that I didn't lose some corn in the process. So we are going to open it, but I'm not going to take the lid off. Oh, it's hot y'all. It's hotter than a real, I remember. Okay, probably because I'm rushing it. And I'm not gonna take the lid off completely. I'm just gonna do this, okay? We're gonna let some of that steam out and um, I'm gonna move y'all in. Cause here we go, it's gonna get good. So if you can kind of see, <gasps> They're boiling. They're bubbling. They're looking beautiful. I love them. Um, just kind of let that release a little bit more. It's really hot. I don't want to allow the cool air in all at once because I don't want to risk cracking my jars. <laughs> so I'm trying to be so patient. But it smells like it's burning. I don't see corn floating around, so it may just be me. All right. Okay, okay. Oh, oh there's so pretty. Okay. Okay, y'all. I can't get you any closer, so you're going to have to wait till I get them out. I'm going to roll you around. And I'm going to flip you over here. I'm going to get really close, and you're going to probably see my nose here. I'm going to switch you this way. Okay. And I'm going to stick the corn right here on this towel. That's what I'm going to do. Right here. Okay. So I'm going to use this little doodad right here because you don't want to touch these jars. You want to keep your fingers. That's what I'm talking about. See? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Is that not exciting? <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
There's another one. You want to kind of spice them out a little bit so they can breathe. Because you're going to want the air to circulate because you're going to leave them here for 24 hours. And you're going to let them cool down naturally before you remove your rings and put your dates on. Here's another one. I love that. Okay, I gotta get something to take this thingy out. I gotta remove the other. Ooh, that's hot. Alrighty. There's one. Well, we didn't lose any. I smelt burning but they all look good so there's no corn floating around there's still water in the pot so we didn't boil the water out and there we go there's a fly we have flies in the building okay we all think <laughs> they're so cool <laughs> okay um maybe i can just take you off let's see see if i can figure this out oh did you hear the pop that's what you want to hear well i go i said i could pop or well i go it said i could flip i guess i can't anymore that's all right okay that's it you guys um do you use well water or spring water um no i just use our water we're not on well water um i just use what we've got to can them mm -mm. i just use what we got um which hmm i'm really rethinking the water situation which is a whole different thing i have this video i'm gonna do a walk okay TikTok will take you down some rabbit trails it will take you to places that you never dreamed of. So, I actually had a dream about it involved water. And I was scrolling TikTok, and this lady pops up on my For You page, and her title says, Watch the Waters. So, what do I do? I sit there and I listen to her two minute video, and she starts talking about this documentary. And I probably shouldn't even be sharing this on here, but here we go. I'm already in. And it was called Watch the Waters. Well, it's on Rumble. And I went and I watched it. And it's about virus. <sighs> Took me to places I probably shouldn't go. But anyway, knowledge is power. You know, our waters aren't safe. Our waters aren't clean. So that's something I've been thinking about is what's in our water. Yeah. I had corn turn dark one year. And I was told it was because I had well water. Hmm interesting so hmm that's that's crazy no we just have our it's rural water it's not well water but we're a small town here so I, um you know I'm, anyway. okay guys I'm gonna call it good one more look at our beautiful corn see <laughs> I don't see if you can see the bubblies but here we are. So if I'm free and if you're free, um, I'm going to do another canning thing next Friday, except I'm going to use a different canner for those that um, don't have the dial gauge. I'm going to use mine that doesn't have the dial gauge. And we're going to go through that whole process because I didn't realize there was such a need for canning videos. Well, I can take care of that. I love it. I love canning and I want everybody else to love canning. And, um, Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your love and support. It's getting late here. I know it's getting late there. God bless you. Um, until next time. Bye.